Thank you again. Uh, I hope the, my voice is clear, you can uh, hear us. Uh, just a brief introdu introduction. My name is Francesco Maresca, and I'm responsible for, um, let's say, Central North of Europe, Asia, and uh, in Africa. Here is uh, Mauro. My, yeah. my name is Mauro Turin. I'm in charge of uh, Eastern Europe, part of Eastern Europe and uh, um, Middle East and other countries like uh, United States and South, uh, South America, Spain, and others. Uh, so welcome to our webinar. Uh, we will start right now, and for this reason, we will introduce uh, the doctor relators of today, Mr. Enrico, the coordinator of uh, Globus Academy. And to the other side, uh, that you can see, uh, we have uh, Diego Mantovani, that is uh, the physiotherapist of PSG Football Club. Um, we hope that you will enjoy our uh, webinar today. Uh, as Francesco already wrote to, to, the, to the chat, uh, we start right now. If you have any question, please write it down there and we will answer during the webinar as much as possible. Okay, just uh, to understand what are the next dates, uh, this is uh, the first of the four webinars that are going to happen in the next two weeks. You have received uh, with email the link uh, to uh, register, and when you see uh, on the registration part, you have the four different webinars that will take place uh, in this room in the next uh, couple of weeks, of course, uh, with the help of uh, um, Enrico and other international specialists. So please uh, remind, this is just one of the first uh, webinars we are going uh, to broadcast during next week. So please stay tuned, and I think now if Enrico Want yeah, to, start. to say anything? No, it's okay. okay. I think we can. Okay. We can start. Yeah. We can start and please uh, enjoy. Ask the questions. We will try to answer the question during uh, this webinar, but most of the questions will be answered at the end to avoid to interrupt too often. Thank you very much. Enjoy the webinar. See you later. Ciao, Diego. Can you hear me? Ciao. Good morning. Ciao. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yeah, uh, I'm very glad to, uh, to introduce you and to stay here with you. We are not very close, but I think we can understand each other in a very good way. Uh, so, uh, Diego is a sorry, okay. Uh, Diego is a is a good physio, of course, in, uh, in the professional football club uh, field, but also a good friend of mine. And well, we're gonna discuss about tackle therapy, having a discussion here with you. And let's introduce the basic of psychotherapy. Last time during the webinar, uh, Francesco and Mauro were speaking about the origins. I can say the fathers of the uh, of the uh, psychotherapy. Don't want to spend so much time in this uh, in this area. Just to remind that we are talking about alternative current. Uh, Nikola Tesla was the the, the, fa the the father. I can say the discoverer, the inventor also of the alternative current. Arsène Sonoval was the first, uh, the first uh, physician in uh, physics that started the first uh, experiments uh, uh, on letting the alternative current uh, on his body. And uh, uh, incredible, he uh, understood that the alternative current can uh, warm up the tissues without killing any, anyone, no one, I can say. And Nadia Schmidt, uh, that was a German uh, uh, doctor, physician, and physics also, uh, wrote the first book. Uh, on the history about diatomy and also invent the name diatomy from, from Greek uh, origins. Uh, this is for say that if we are uh, talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, can you have a zoom in please on, uh, on the electromagnetic spectrum? Okay, we got the visible, the visible light is around here. On the right part, we have the uh, ionizing radiation that are quite uh, dangerous for human body, but are uh, good, for example, for the X-ray application. On the left part, we have the non-ionizing radiation that we use in several uh, fields, like for uh, mobile communication, TV broadcasting, uh, microwave, like the oven that we have in our in our houses. If we're speaking about the, the old time, the old uh, type of diatomy, that means uh, endogenous heat production. The old one, we are using a, a high level frequencies like uh, the microwave around 2.45 gigahertz and the shortwave diatomy around 27.12 diatomy. 
Yeah, this kind of old diatomy, we are not so specific. Uh, could just uh, have a, um, a worm on the surface of tissue, not so deep and completely aspecific. That means uh, not like the tackle devices where we have uh, the transfer of energy in a capacitive, automatic and resistive modality. So it means that we can combine the, uh, the, the energy with the um, manual skills of the operator. Doesn't matter if he's a doctor, he's a physio, he's a chiropractor, he's an osteopath. The point is that with the lower level of frequency, it, we have a non-invasive frequencies that are very deep for our tissues and we can combine in a most functional and re-educational way. On the other hand, the old ones just, you had the two, uh, the, the two electrodes, you just used to put the, the patient in the middle, but just the warming does, is, is not enough for doing a, a, a great uh, therapeutic results. So as Mauro last time was, was speaking during the, the workshop, the basic principle is the uh, electric capacitor, where we got the two plates connected with an uh, alternated current generator. And uh, we got two plates and the human body just in the between. So what happened is that we have an alternated current thousand times per second from one pole and the other. So we are promoting this, uh, um, unizing it is a, a mobilization of the molecules inside tissues. And, and how many times we have this movement inside tissue? Well, it depends on the frequency that we select on the machine. For example, if we are using a 700 kilohertz, we are using, we are promoting a movement of the ions uh, uh, 700,000 times per second. So the molecules are starting to, are starting to vibrate inside tissues. Uh, that's the reason why we can uh, stimulate, uh, have a deep, very deep uh, biostimulation inside our body. Uh, which are these molecules? Well, all the molecules that has a polarity, like sodium, calcium, potassium, chlorine, and for sure the most important molecule is the bipolar molecule that we have when represented in our body, that is the water molecule. This is a fat molecule, uh, also have a kind of vibration, but the most important molecules are, are those with an electric charge, of course. So we can attract to one place or to the other, to one pole or to the other, thousand times per second. All right, we got, as the guy said last time, two modalities, the capacitive and the resistive. Let go, let's go a bit deeper to better understand these two modalities. Uh, the capacitive, I can take here a disc for better understand to you. Uh, as you can see, this is a disc, this is isolated, uh, as you can see, is a black one, okay, uh, and it's this one. So when we use isolated disc and capacitive modality, always we are attracting the uh, electric flow very, very close to the surface, okay. So we are always close to the electrode. Um, on the other hand, we got the resistive. The resistive uses conductive electrodes, as you can see here is a, um, a metal plate, okay, uh, and we are connecting on the top, for example, of the tide, and in this, in this uh, example, we can reach the deepness of the tissue. Why? Because the, uh, the target of the resistive uh, method are the tissues with a high level of, uh, uh, of impedance. The tissues with, uh, um, with a, uh, I can say, quite poor in water, okay? Like bones, like tendons, like aponeurosis. On the other hand, we are working most on the soft tissues, okay? That's right, so this is the basic. So, capacitive, superficial, always close to the electrode, and the, 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 the target are the soft tissues, mainly the soft tissues. Uh, on the other hand, the resistive is for reaching the deepness and the target are the dry tissues, let's say dry tissue, the tissue quite poor in water. Okay, I got an animation here. Uh, let me try if, it, if you can see it. Yeah, this is a quick animation for better understand the movement of ions and the concentration on the capacitive modality, all right? Always is quite superficial, 
we can never reach the, the deepness of the tissue. On the other end, we got the uh, resistive modality, where we got the plates under the tide. Always we get to draw the, the proper geometry, and in this case, we can reach also the um, we can reach the, um, the, the the bone, of course, the joint uh, in, in the deepness. Okay. So, what about the recent scientific publication? Uh, I don't want to spend so much time, but just speaking about the, the recent studies. When I used to uh, to start using the tech up devices, the first tech up devices were uh, there, there was really poor uh, bibliography. Uh, well, the results were encouraging, were really fantastic, but very poor bibliography. Not so many studies about that. But right now, nowadays, if you go on PubMed, if you go on Google, Google Scholar, Pedro, and Base, whatever you want uh, in terms of uh, uh, medicine research engine, you, you can find a lot of bibliography, a lot of articles, uh, typing, for example, uh, Decker therapy or type, typing uh, CREP, that is an acronym, uh, Capacitive Resistive Energy Transfer. Uh, you can really find a lot of articles in a lot of different fields. Uh, about tendons, rehabilitation, sport applications, uh, uh, effects on tissues, effort on regeneration on tissues. So, is a is a there is a new era, let's say, about these devices. From the, the um, if, if we are talking about the the ancient, I mean, the, the fathers that discovered this kind of uh, possibility for for medicine. But nowadays we get some new uh, possibilities. Okay. Um, this is uh, an article uh, made by Tashiro, is a Tashiro Dola, a Japanese researcher of 2017. Um, he's speaking about the ability of the Tegra therapy to promote cellular metabolism and oxygenation supply to the tissues. Okay, let's go a bit deeper in this. So, this is saying we are not talking just heating the tissues, we are not. Uh, um, talking about hot pack water, the benefits are completely different. Uh, this study compared the two modalities, the hot pack water and the Decker devices, and uh, the Decker device can increase the total hemoglobin and the oxygenated hemoglobin. On the other hand, the hot pack couldn't do, couldn't do this. Uh, this is the results, I don't want to spend so much time, but the point is that after just 15 minutes of intervention, they had the measure of the hemoglobin, the total hemoglobin and the uh, hemoglobin saturation five minutes after, um, after five minutes and five and five for reaching the 30 minutes uh, follow up, I can say. And um, they discovered that uh, uh, there is, a, after when you switch off the machine, you have an, uh, an increasing of the total hemoglobin. Uh, also after the therapy. This is very important. It's like uh, saying we are starting to promote a briefing of, of tissues uh, just after the uh, after the therapy, just after 15 minutes. I think this is very important because uh, without the therapist, this is uh, this um, is not is not uh, possible. Okay. Other thing, other strong point: the stimulation of stem cells, for example. Yeah, because it's, it stimulates the, the, cell, the stem cells proliferation for induce uh, uh, an injury, uh, I mean, um, a healing process, a uh, repair injury tissue. Um, for example, the collagen production, uh, the glucose aminoglycans production can increase after a uh, stimulation with uh, this kind of technology. Other thing very important is something more practical, something very, very Practical on the um, on the chronic uh, on the chronic field, we can say. As you know, when you, when you when we are talking about chronic pathology, uh, it's not so easy having results. We are not just talking about pain reduction. We are talking about functional results. And in this study, is an Italian study of 2018. Um, they had 70 people, uh, 70 patients with knee osteoarthritis. And they do just a two weeks program with six decker application. So not so many. Uh, this is to give you also uh, an idea of how many treatments we need for having results. So two weeks program, six decker application. They had a measure before the treatment, after the treatment, at one month and at three months 
about the WOMAC, uh, uh, the WOMAC scale, the WOMAC score, that is a, a, an index of a functionality in uh, for osteoarthritis, and of course a VAS for just for have an idea about the pain. And what happened? Well, the uh, the control group had no results, no results at all, not before, not uh, not after, and of course no after the follow up. But with other with the with the study group, they have very very good results reducing the score of WOMAC. That means increasing the functionality of those patients. And I'm talking about increasing more than 50 percent. So uh, uh, I think these are very good results, also in terms of pain, as you can see here. You can you can find this article in a very very easy way in, in every uh, search engine. Other articles in physical therapy and sports. I don't want to spend so much time, but just for understand that uh, we can we can do a, um, a recovery, a very good recovery. For example, we can trigger the delay of set muscle soreness for trigger and delay uh, and recover faster the athletes. For example, I think uh, this is one of the strong points also for Diego. Uh, and this is another article for recovering the biomechanical characteristics. So. It means that after an exhausted, for example, running, as you know, uh, we lose the, um, the, uh, the step length, for example, and uh, using the, this, uh, this technology, we can recover and also increase the performance of the, uh, of the athletes. So Diego, what's your uh, experience uh, with, uh, with this device? Are you using for, uh, for speed up the recovery? <laughs> yeah. Um... Hello everybody again. Um, in my experience, uh, I'm using this technology since 2004. Uh, okay. Of course, in the beginning, it was not uh, we, we didn't have the machines that we have today. Um, but uh, from the moment I start to you to use this kind of uh, of technology, of course, I could uh, I could um, give to patients. I give could give to athletes. Uh, a better um, a better uh, kind of recovery let's say like that um, in my experience day by day is a uh, is a very interesting uh, all the of all these things that you are speaking about is very interesting uh, because it's uh, is uh, in the practica theory is good but in the practica when you really apply this uh, this kind of um, of treatment, we really can see the difference. Uh, we really can see uh, a player restart his activity uh, faster. We really can see that you save time when you have, for example, a muscle damage. We really can save time. And uh, in our job, who works with uh, professional players, uh, knows that uh, if you if you if you have uh, if you recover playing only one day faster. This is already something very good for the club, yes, for the team, for the player, for everybody. So yeah. yes, I I using this technology for a long time. I like this, and uh, and uh, of course, uh, of course, it's uh, is uh, something that uh, is, uh, I find really interesting. So I agree hundred percent with you. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you for your experience. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't spend out of time. I want to go more on the practical part. How we can set up a perfect treatment? So uh, we need to know some knowledge. Uh, we need to 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 well uh, understand the principles and how Excuse to use it. Just a, a yeah. Out. It is a very interesting question. Yeah. Um, uh, talking about the technology and it, it is. Uh, about if this uh, technology is more for pain management or muscle recovery? Well, you can use it both, absolutely. Uh, pain is the most easy thing that you can achieve, okay? But we're not just talking about pain, we are talking about functional management, I can say. Uh, I think as uh, Diego can, uh, can say, uh, recovering an athlete uh, is not just a term of pain, but recover a function. Uh, also for muscular lesion, for bone injuries, for traumatology, there, there is really a wide of uh, option of intervention for this kind of, uh, of things. Yes, uh, in my opinion, when we make uh, athletes rehabilitation, 
of course in pain is uh is some more information is important for us to understand the pain we have some scales to understand the pain but we are not treating the play pain we are treating the athlete we ha we have to recover the function so uh the most important for me is uh is um is to to give possibility to improve uh the skills uh, we 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 have the possibility to 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 put athlete before on the pitch before to make uh, his uh, his activity and without risks of course it's not so easy of course you have a a, a lot of things to do it's not the only tackle we have to make a, a good process rehabilitation but of course this kind of technology in my opinion in my experience uh, help really help and save time and save time in the cases of this uh, kind of uh, of patient is uh, is uh, something uh, really important so we don't treat the pain uh, we can control the pain, but the tacker, uh, we save time in the healing process. So the, the cell stimulation, uh, we have a, a good scar, a good quality of new tissue and uh, good elasticity of this tissue. So this is, this is the question, not only pain control, but uh, quality of new tissue. Very good, too. I think that is uh, more than enough. Thank you very much, Diego, and thank you, Enrico. It's okay. For a uh, better understand and answer to this question, we need a method. The method is PGE. That means power, geometry, and electro. Uh, if we manage these three variables, we really can understand the processes and uh, focus on the results that we want to achieve uh, on tissues, achieve on tissues. So uh, there is a, a therapeutic window. This is a very important thing between 30 and 42 degrees uh, where we have to work, we have to stay. And, and by the way, there is three more windows, more specific windows, like the, uh, the green one between 30 and 35 degrees. Here we got efforts without a heat production, okay? We are working in a kind of athermy. We are not really producing, producing uh, a lot of heating on the tissue. This is good for algo sedative, also for pain management, okay? And we are promoting the, um, the, the, the movement of ions, so it's a biostimulant for all the cells. And this also, for sure, can be used on the acute phase. On the other hand, we got the yellow window, that is between 35 and 38 degrees. Here we, we are producing uh, some energy, so we are uh, heating the tissues. This is very good for oxygenation, for vascularization. For example, if we want to do a drainage of tissue or a massage, for example. Uh, this window also is very good for uh, the uh, fibroblast stimulation. So if we want to um, stimulate all the processes that are behind the lesion, like uh, producing um, uh, elastin, collagen, uh, hyaluronic acid, acid. Uh, so we need to stimulate in this specific window. Remember the yellow one, because later we will see how the machine can help us to understand this, uh, uh, these efforts and how to set up okay, the right treatment. Uh, the other one is red, so it's between 38 and 42 degrees. This is absolutely hyperthermic. So we are producing, producing uh, high levels of uh, thermal effect. This is good for, for example, chronic pathologies, fibrosis, uh, or if you, if you want to do a very deep uh, muscle relaxing action. So power is the first variable that we have to manage and we have to have very clear in our mind. On the other thing, we have the geometry. That is, in, is a, He's talking about where I put the electrodes, where I put the plate, where I put the electrode. Uh, we got our model Federica here. Thank you, Federica, for coming. Uh, I want to show you something. Uh, I'll just show you. Okay. For example, uh, we can see here the complanar geometry or the opposite geometry. Okay. The component geometry is when we put one plate and one electrode quite um, uh, close one to the other in a superficial way. Uh, the current flow goes between one point and the other. I hope you can see here. So uh, with this geometry, we never can treat and affect 
the um, the uh, the deepest the deep um, the deep point of the of the tide, for example. Okay. On the other hand, we have the opposite geometry. So we need to put the plate under here and the electrode over here. In this case, in this case, the electrode flows goes up and down from top to bottom and vice versa. So we can read the deep the deepness of uh, tissues. What happens if I put the electrode here? So always keep in mind that the electron flows goes uh, between the plate and the electron. Or what happens if I put here? Okay, we are involving the full limb with, uh, with this geometry. So the geometry is very important. Let's say, if I need to do, for example, a, a kinetic chain work, I can put the plate under, okay, under the, uh, the back, Okay, in this example, we get the, the t-shirt, but of course we have to uh, not to use a t-shirt because we have always to have a good contact uh, between the plate and the skin. And on the other hand, we can do a chain work, okay, with all the posterior chain and the electron flows goes from the plate to the electrode. So this is a very long geometry and for sure we can treat the full limb. Uh, by the way, I suggest you not to use the geometry, uh, but to, to use to select the geometry in function of the area that you want to treat. This is very important. Okay. Diego, do you think other things about the geometry? Other 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 ideas? Man, no, I think you. You explain in, in in good way. So of course we can uh, when you have some experience the machine we can use different geometries. I think to 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 start is uh, it's better to start in the most uh, simple way and then uh, using with some experience uh, understanding the the answer understand how uh, deep you you are introducing the, this heat. Uh, you can uh, change and and make some different ways. Uh, I I like it much more is the opposite geometry, in my experience, than the complementary uh, geometry. Just because I know that the the, the energy goes uh, through all tissues, so go much much more deep. So, but I think it is the the the, the question. Uh, yeah, right. Exactly. Thank you. So we, we spoke uh, about power, we spoke about geometry. The other variable is the electrode, okay? The electrode uh, uh, selection, I can say, is very important because if we are talking about capacitive, okay, uh, we, we said that it's very superficial, as you can say here, we, if we are using the small one, we are treating a small area, but just above the electrode, or if we are using a big electrode, we are always superficial, but um, with the biggest area, I can say. On the other hand, if we are uh, speaking about the resistive, uh, with the resistive, the things are a bit different because it depends of the size of the, I mean, the, the deepness of the tissue. Uh, it depends on the size of the electron because the concentration of the electrons uh, has a, a bit, um, a little difference. Uh, this is just for saying that if we are using a small resistive, that is this one for example, is a stainless steel electrode, metal one, oh sorry, uh, okay, uh, stainless steel electrode, just on, on the top of the tie here. So the concentration of electron is quite superficial because all the electrons stay in a very, very small surface. On the other hand, if we are using the big, for example, the 70 millimeters stainless steel resistive electrode, we can reach the deepness and we can finally uh, trigger on the, uh, on the femur, for example. Uh, the point is that with the, with the resisting modality, we can affect also the connective tissue. So for example, the fascia, the fascia structures, the, the ligaments. Uh, so the target tissue is a bit different instead of the capacity. Let's say an example. Let's uh, see an example. Maybe it's a good uh, If I want to treat, for example, a, a chronic tendinopathy, I can put the plate under here. A patellar tendinopathy is a, you know, is a connective tissue. So it's very dry, very poor in water. Uh, so I want to use the resistive. 
uh, is very superficial. It's not in the deepness of the tissue. It's not in the deep. It is in the deepness of the lower limb. So it's very superficial. So I use the 30 millimeters. So resistive, 30 millimeters. Uh, the opposite geometry, not complanar, and I can treat it standing from here in this position, for example. Okay. Maybe it's better if I take a, a chair because I, I could be more comfortable. Okay. This is just for a straight treatment directly on the uh, on the on the tendon. Um, okay. Uh, on the other hand, if I want to treat, for example, just a muscle. Yeah, no, and, uh, I'm sorry, Enrico, let me just tell something. Uh, in that position before, treating yeah. the, the knee is very yeah. interesting to make an association uh, with the zoometric contraction. You put awesome. some resistance in tibia, in the ankle. Uh, you can concentrate more uh, energy on the knee, on the patella tendon. So it's a very interesting system too. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Diego, really. Because, of course, we are not just promoting the energy, we're not just staying here, but we can exactly. do exactly. kind of mobilization or, for example, like Diego says, like isometric contraction, okay, and then relax maybe, or yes. some rotation, some manual yes. therapy yes. techniques you, that you, we can apply. Yeah, of course, you improve the density of the tissues, of the tendon, and you can concentrate it more energy in that position that you are want to treat. So it's very yeah, good, to, right. in my opinion. That's right, exactly, exactly. Well, another way for better understand this concept that you already said right now, is the posterior chain, for example. I think this is uh, very, very easy to understand on the posterior chain. When we put the plate under here, of course, with no clothes, and if you use the uh, resistive, we said that resistive method is for dry tissue, okay? So with high level of impedance. If we um, elevate the limb, okay, we increase the impedance of the posterior part because we are going to we are going to stretch in it. So the impedance yes. is going pushing higher. So the intensity of the treatment will be higher. Is it right, exactly. Evo? Yeah, exactly. And in this position, you can ask it to some isometric contraction with the hamstrings. Yes. You improve even more. Some muscle energy techniques, some yes. uh, stretch, relax, uh, PNF, uh, or whatever. Yes. Yeah. You can associate all, all of these techniques, all these manual techniques with, uh, with the machine. You're right. Perfect. Great. Okay. Okay, so just talking about the basis because we uh, already speak about the power, the geometry, the electrode, size and type. Uh, another thing that here, I, I don't want to speak so much about the frequency, but just for uh, understand that higher is the frequency, most superficial is the treatment, lower is the frequency, most deeper is, uh, more deeper is, uh, more deep is the treatment. Um, for became uh, friendly, I can say, uh, with, with the frequency, we need a bit of experience because uh, the machine already gives you the ability with the resistive capacity, with the size of the electrode to really focus on the tissue that you really want to treat, uh, like, for example, a myofascial densification or uh, a scar tissue. The frequency is something more for be more selective, but for example, all the programs that are inside the machine are with the standard frequency 470 kilohertz, because this is the most used and is the right frequency for reaching the deepness of the tissues on the musculoskeletal system. Diego, do, are you using uh, frequency, managing the frequency or, uh, or not? Well, to be honest, uh, I use uh, 90, 90% of times I use uh, only 470 hertz uh -huh. because I, I think it is uh, a, a frequency that I can treat uh, basically everything. Of course, it's possible if you have a more superficial tissue, uh, you can change this, this frequency or more deep, you can change to, to treat better that position of that tissue. But I think in the 470, that one, one possibility, 
in the um, in this machine I think I, we can treat um, in my experience usually I use only this frequency basically okay okay thank you very much so for uh, for understand the frequency can uh, can be more precise on the capacity for select different types of layers and this is good if we are treating more the epi uh, the derma and epidermis or uh, small technical problem uh, what happened there uh, we do we do we do we do uh, I tried to change the camera, but okay, right now I'm fine. So, um, it's a spot time. You drink Coca Cola and everything is going to be Coffee right. Coffee break. Coffee, Coffee break. break. Digo, can you hear me? Can you see me? Or yeah. no? I cannot see, I can hear only. Uh, all right, well, I was speaking about just the frequency that in the capacitive uh, mode you can, you can treat in a more precise way the superficial layers and uh, on the other hand on the resistive you can select a different level of, uh, of deepness. Everything okay guys? Um, I tried to change the camera but, but put, put the other one again. Okay. Yeah one second please. Uh, And a small problem there. Sorry for the small technical problem we are trying to solve. It. Just a second, I just finding out how to remove this uh, sorry Sorry guys, I hope in one second we can fix it. <laughs> this is the, the live uh, the live travels, the live the live The movie director is coming. Maybe Enrico, we can use this uh, time this moment. You could explain us uh, about the using the different frequencies. Yes, or maybe some questions. Uh, what about using after surgery for scar tissue, Diego? Uh, yes, we, of course. We have when you have already a scar tissue, it's possible to use, of course, and uh, we associate it with the massage or with the fascia toes uh, to make some uh, kind of fibrolysis. I think is uh, very useful. Because we, we improve uh, the temperature, we improve the permeability of the tissue, so yeah. why not some superficial technique? Maybe in this case we can uh, we can change uh, the the, um, the frequency and to make some okay. more superficial treatment. If I'm, we are speaking about the skin scar tissue or Okay, there are other, a lot of questions, really, really a lot of, for example, they, they ask in here about using an ankle sprain, for example. What's your, what's your manage of the ankle sprain for your football player, for example? Yeah, it's very interesting. I use, uh, I put the plate in the, under the cuff, in this position that you have. The plate? And, uh, put the plate under the cuff, I can treat the uh, anterior compartment of the ankle. Yes, in this way, I can uh, have the ankle free to make some mobilization during the treatment, mm -hmm. uh, or or on the uh, laying on the on on the front is possible to put the plate um, over the knee and uh, bending the knee. We can treat and make good mobilization during the treatment too. We have different possibilities. Depending. You mean face down. Uh, sorry. You mean face down. Yes, yeah, possible to face down. 
Okay. Uh, Pancho Basso. Yeah, you've been yeah. playing on the knee, for example? Yeah, I use it in this position. I bend the knee 90 degrees. I can yeah. use use uh, one hand is free for make uh, some mobilization or some stretching exactly exactly okay. i use this position too to treat uh, facetis plantar facetis all right all right all right later we will speak about that okay yes. everything okay the technical points okay can we can we have also this camera on on the on the screen of the machine or not because I, I would like to show you guys uh, something on the machine, something on the on the screen directly. Uh, I, I moved the I moved the chart before. Okay, here we go. All right, finally we got it. Okay, uh, a bit here. Yeah. Here we are. Okay, so let's go to understand how the programs work. For example, we got an atlas here. Where we can find uh, uh, all the uh, all the information uh, over the uh, over the uh, pathology. For example, if I want to treat uh, a trunk pathology, I can just can tap here, and I got a lot of pathology. I can choose, for example, the sciatica. I got information. In this case, I got one uh, capacity phase and one resistive phase. If I tap in here, I get the description of what I have to do. For example, uh, heat production in painful areas, and I got some useful images that show me where to put the blade, where to put the electrode in different positions. So, in a lateral side bending, in prone position, supine position. Okay. Uh, if I go back on the second phase, resistive one, I tap in here, I get a description of what I have to do, and it's just a suggestion because, by the way, every uh, every uh, professional operator have his own techniques and can combine, of course, his own techniques with the benefits of the of the technology. And of course, you got the uh, images of what you have to do. So let's do a, brief, uh, a basic example. Uh, we can use, for example, the free program. Uh, we start with the capacity. Okay, I'm using the uh, 70 millimeters disc. Okay, I set up, for example, 50% uh, of power. And I want, I want to show you something. I put the cream, and I'm starting to treat the thigh in zoom out, like I see. So, for example, I want to treat just the, the thigh of Federica, okay? So uh, I want to show you uh, how to uh, manage the intensity of the machine. Uh, we said that there are uh, three windows: the uh, the green, the yellow, and the, uh, and the and the red one. So the machine gives us uh, some histograms for better understand what we are doing at the time. Uh, guys, can you can you zoom on the on the machine, please? Okay. okay. As you can see, we got a yellow histogram with a 300 milliamperes. It means that we are pro producing some heating effects on, on the tide. Uh, okay, she's perceiving a, a four in a scale of zero to 10 uh, in terms of temperature, okay? Uh, is it pleasant? Okay, it's very pleasant. Uh, okay. This helps us to understand that we are promoting, can zoom out, um, vasodilatation and increasing in oxygenation of tissue on this area. For example, for just a drainage or relaxing on, on the hamstring. Uh, we got a, a very good friend of us that is a thermometer, the infrared thermometer. It is very uh, simple and cheap um, tool that we, we can use. On the uh, right, uh, on the right uh, leg, we got 30 degrees. Uh, here, where we already start now, now we got 32 degrees. Okay, so uh, just in few seconds, an increasing of two degrees Celsius for increasing the vascularization of the tissue. Now, I want to show you something uh, with the resistance.
I just can switch from the capacitive to the resistive. I set up again 50% of power. And I do the same geometry. Okay. Maybe you can say, okay, we are treating soft tissue. Why are you using a resistive mode? Well, I'm going deeper on tissues with the resistive. I'm affecting also the, uh, the, the connective, so the, the fascia, we can say, the connective part. And uh, in a few seconds, we will see what happened on the, on the screen about the histograms for better understanding the level of temperature that we got. Can you zoom on the on the screen? Okay, let's uh, have a look over there. So we got a violet histogram that is very high in terms of temperature. Uh, look at the impedance, the ohm. The impedance are 50, around 50 ohms because the impedance of the is very low, so uh, is well hydrated. Okay, uh, so 100, uh, 1,100 milliampere. Okay, we have 50 ohm. Okay, zoom out, please. Okay, if we are moving from this part to another part, maybe like here on the calf, let's have a look on what happened on the screen of the machine. So, uh, on the machine, we will have different levels of intensity and different levels of impedance. As you can see, the impedance now is 150 ohms, is absolutely different than before, and the current flow is almost the middle of before. So with lower levels of intensity. What have we changed between before and now? We changed the geometry. As you can see now, we are on the red area, okay? So, uh, zoom out. So this is very important to understand that the geometry can make the difference if we are treating a small surface or a longer surface with the same amount of power, always 50%, the thermal effect we are completely different, and also the biological effect could be different. Uh, Diego, is it clear for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's a uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good explanation. It's uh, really like that. So that's why I try always to put uh, closer the the all plates, all electrodes, to put closer yeah. to have more effective in the position that I decide to treat. Sometimes it's not possible. Like in the calf, for example, like the ankle. I mean, so yeah. you have to use the put the plate in the hamstring and treat the ankle. So you have to you should improve the power in the machine, and then yeah. you have can have the same effect. But it's uh, it's important uh, uh, the place where you put the plate is uh, especially in the resistive mode is really important. Exactly, you're right. You're right. And it's good that this machine show us can give you some possibilities, some protocols with this, some possibility where it's possible to put the plate. But sometimes it's even if I'm working a long time with the machine, but uh, sometimes it's really useful. And another, another thing, thing I show you. So, sorry, I interrupt you because I want to show you to the guys at home that we are still almost two degrees more than before. So in a few seconds, we can really increase the vascularization of tissue. We were starting from 30, now we are almost at 32. This is a, just an easy and quick example, okay. Yes, uh, the thermometer is, is useful for us to really understand the, the, how much we are improving the temperature. But as yeah. you spoke before, and you asked to her, 0, 010, how was the, the feeling, no? Uh, this is, I really use, this is uh, really important because uh, is the, the only really, really good way that you have to know um, how much, how much temperature we are improved, uh, how much heating we are, we are, we are putting this tissue. So yeah. when I treat some player, I always I tell, uh, if I decide that it's a kind of chronic problem, I really want to improve the temperature. I tell him from zero ten, I we have to stay about eight nine. When you arrive eight nine, you tell me, and I I use in this. If goes uh, over, you he tell me, I put down or I put less. But this is a way that you can directly after one minute treatment to be already uh, with the energy uh, that we want to work. So it's really useful this this um, this. Way of, uh, case. With the patient. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Another thing that I want to remind is always to put the plate in a well contact with the surface. You, we never have to put the plate in a partial contact, okay? Uh, otherwise, we can have a, a warming of this side, but maybe we want to focus on another area. So always be sure that the plate is well conducted to the patient with a bit of cream, okay, for promote the uh, conductivity between the plate and the patient. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we go, we can go ahead. We already spoke a bit about the atlas that uh, give us the ability to choose different pathologies and having an idea of the positioning. Now, just because we are in this position, it is quite easy to, to show. I want to speak about the fascia tools, just a few words, okay? So fascia tool is something that the globus uh, uh, well, actually uh, designed for the treatment of, uh, of fascia. I think that you know that fascia is a very important tissue, uh, very common in this era because there are a lot of publications and a lot of techniques, a lot of schools around the uh, treatment of fascia. Um, fascia is, is not just a container of our muscle, but is a web of receptors, it is a, uh, we can say, be the, the biggest receptor organ of our body. And these tools, uh, maybe with a, with a zoom out, I can show you some, some of them. Or, all right. We can treat it in a specified way. For example, there are the blades, the small and the big one, I can stay here, okay, where we can just connect the machine with the device and easily we can show how to treat for example, a cuff that I think also Diego is something that is using a lot. Are you using the fascia tools in your day-by-day -day job, Diego? Uh, yes, yes. I'm using since one year. Um, I'm using long time Fekar. I'm using long time fibrolysis too. But uh, okay. now you have the possibility to use together. So yes, uh, I start to use, I have good results. Even before, uh, Globus created these uh, fascia tools. Uh, I, I'm using the normal electrode like a fibrolysis, you know, to some deep treatment or associated with uh, some deep massage uh, in this, at the same time as I'm using the tacker. So, uh, of course, the, the new fascia tools is something that uh, really make uh, our job really easier. Because at the That's same time, we make fibrolysis and we, we introduce the energy of tacker that we want. It's okay. Great. Uh, we just need a cable, the, the resistive cable. Uh, I changed was just one cable. And we can connect, oh, sorry, we can connect to the, to, the, to the tool, okay? We always use the plate over there. We put a bit of cream, we got the fascial program over there. Of course, as you, as you can well understand, is a resistive protocol. So I, I suggest also to use the gloves. Now, I'm not using it, but because I'm, this is just an example, but I suggest to use the gloves for uh, isolate yourself. There are no risks for the operator, okay? No risk, absolutely. Um, what we are doing now is just a scanning of the tissue. Uh, does it pain? I don't know, right? No. No, it's okay. So we are using the edge, the angle edge, just for perceiving some densification in this case of the calf. We are uh, benefit from the mechanical effect and also uh, of the, the current that we are promoting. So we are warm in the tissue and the, uh, the technique is absolutely more gentle than the normal technique with the Aston tools. Okay. Uh, on the few days, in the next days, we're going to have three more webinars uh, around these uh, specific treatments for upper limb, for lower limb, and for spine, where we, we go more in detail on the treatment, uh, on, on the practical part. Okay, so uh, please sign up, uh, register, and maybe later the guys, Francesco and uh, Mauro, will, will uh, remind you the dates, uh, the hours. Uh, I was just to, just to show you in a very easy way how to how we can, we can use it. We have a, 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 a rounded uh, edge here that sometimes we get used at the beginning because the pressure for each uh, centimeter square is uh, lower and the flat line, online inline uh, edge. 
as you can see here, uh, I found the densification, for example, in the musculotendineous region, and there is a, a little, a little uh, increasing of uh, of the red, we can say, of the of the vascularization of the meal uh, tendineous junction. This is a, one of the typical triggers that I used to treat on my patient too, on my athletes, uh, and really help us a lot in few seconds to recover the mobility also, the full mobility uh, of the soleus and of the calf of the, uh, of the twins. Okay, the other, the other tools, just in a quick way we can use it, let's say is the, the Diablase small, Mm, very useful for the uh, for the Achilles tendon or for a uh, upper part of the uh, of the trunk like the like the neck. Then we develop the uh, dia trigger. Dia trigger is a thumb saver. Is for uh, save our our thumb because after a day by day job. I don't know you, Diego, but before of these tools, my my hands were really you know uh, stressful. Uh, was the same for you before to using the yes, Yasin? Yes, yes. The dia trigger, the Globus created to save uh, physio physiotherapist hands. This is yes. very, very useful. Very useful. Have you had some experience with the use of dia trigger? Yes, I use dia trigger in uh, when I have some trigger points, especially yeah. in medial gluteus, mm -hmm. small gluteus. And a very good, uh, very good uh, results I have had too uh, in uh, fascitis plantaris. I had two cases. Yes, I had two cases. They are already, already when I arrive uh, to, with the team to start to, to work with these uh, players, they are already training group, but always with some pain. Pain, a classical fascitis plantaris. Pain in the morning, pain before I warm up. When I start to this treatment, this players comes every day before training and after training. Even if it's not so good, it was difficult to, 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 to make them understand uh, that we cannot not do it, it 10 times per day because they really <laughs> feel the difference. And the day after, wake up, this the player told me, wake up, start walking without pain. So after two or three months, had some, uh, some pain in the morning. So, uh, very good experience, especially with the dia trigger for fascitis plantaris and um, uh, trigger in the gluteus. Oh, nice. Of course, nice. I use I use for uh, another things too, but in these two special cases, I want to tell you too was uh, interesting the treatment that you show before uh, with the ablate, the large the ablate in the calf. Yes, it's very useful, very interesting to be doing in the, in case of. Um, Achilles uh, inflammation, tendon, Achilles tendon inflammation, because you, the, the key uh, in these cases is reduce the tension of the tendon. And if you reduce and relax the tissue amount, if you relax the, all the muscles, the tendons that you have, as you show uh, on the calf, you will uh, relax the tendon too. So it's really useful. And you can do it, improve the, the um, dorsiflexion. So, right. Right. fantastic way to treat Achilles tendon uh, inflammation. It's okay, it's okay. And, and which of the two holes you, you were using? You know that we have two, uh, two holes, one on, one on the handle and one on the back of the trigger. Which were that one that you, that you use? For me, it's better in the handle. I use in the handle because in this case, I can put the other hand uh, on the back and put the even back. more pressure. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was the, pur the purpose, in fact, because if you connect in here, you can easily sliding on tissue like this for yeah, preparing yeah. the region with a very gentle border here, with a very gentle yeah. edge. Okay, yeah, and if you. Some cases when you don't need to go so deep, it's good too. But uh, yeah, in this position, is, uh, for me, is the, the best one. Nice to know. <laughs> Nice yeah. to know that you find it uh, helpful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other one, have, have you ever used the other one, the DS5? Or, or never? Yeah. Yeah, I used to, the spine, just to Tell relax me. in back. 
I want to tell you that usually before using this, uh, especially in the spine, I make some capacitive treatment with the normal electrode just to improve two, three degrees, degrees the temperature, and then I use um, the, the spine. It's uh, very useful to some, some, uh, to relax some muscle like longissimus, iliocostalis, they show really good re results. Is that, is that, and it's really a pleasure to do this. Right. But the patient, the player, the patient feels uh, very pleasure because it's a kind of uh, spine massage which increases uh, the temperature. So it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's not bad. For those who are following us from home, I want, I want to just to show how it is gonna, uh, how we can use it because we have double horn here, so we can put on the uh, lateral process of the vertebra, and we can do well. Of course, a sliding, uh, also like you said, with a capacitive mode before, or just with a tool, uh, and then we can easily do a PA, for example. I can use my left hand, that is better. So all the techniques that needs a PA mobilization for each vertebral level are really, um, well, easy yes uh, it, when you have to want to improve the extension is uh, useful too yeah 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 you're right it's okay just few words i want to spend for for the spinal uh, webinar uh, we we will see on the few days okay on the next days so let's go ahead let's go ahead because there, is, there are a lot of examples and things to do uh, i put this here Uh, well, this is about the fascia anatomy. We will speak on the next days. The point is that connecting the machine with the uh, with the device, we can increase the temperature and uh, having the uh, breaks down of the hyaluronic acid chains. For this reason, we can increase the the sliding of the tissue. So when the tissue are completely fixed and the fascia are completely blocked. Uh, increasing the temperature we increase the sliding because there is a hyaluronic acid between one layer and the other one uh, and so and then with the with the fascia tool we can go directly on the um, on the densification of the fascia there are also some articles that are uh, speaking about about this uh, I suggest you to visit our website I got it here uh, where you can easily find the, the full course, the full uh, Tecker course, if you go on the academy section on techaglobus.com, you get the online courses where you can easily find the courses. Uh, uh, right, these are professional courses on the use of the machine or also for understanding all about Tecker therapy. I show you some uh, myofascial treatment for example, this one about the uh, chronic cervical pain. Okay, you will find some easy tutorial. I leave this. You go step by step. This starting phase is called scanning phase. We go on scanning the tissue delicately. Tilting our tool of few degrees to detect stiff areas, densifications, and movement restrictions. The manual movement consists of a push phase and return phase, keeping the tool always in contact with the skin to guarantee the closing of the contact, benefit from the therapeutic current, and at the same time perceive the changes in the tissue at every movement. After scanning the back cervical area and detect. Okay, this is just uh, an example. You want to stay here. You can easily find on, on the techaglobus.com inside the online uh, the online course. Uh, this one. All right. So uh, we're going to talking about the hands-free possibility. So do you know this, Diego? Are you using the hands-free? I don't know. Yes, yes. Really? I know. Awesome. Not a oh, long well. time, but uh, yes, I'm using. Hmm. Yes, okay. here I am. 
Yes, it's very useful because uh, uh, it's called a hands-free because you can use Tekker and uh, use your hands at the same time. So you can uh, associate a different kind of treatment at the same time. So yes, I'm using this. All right, nice to know. Uh, today we are gonna speaking about also the new uh, the new kit. I don't know if you have it. Maybe you got the the, the other one. But here we got the new kit with uh, uh, different electrodes. We got the stainless steel flexible electrodes. Okay, that we can put on the uh, on the patient and we can clean in an easy way and reuse thousand and thousand of times. And also the new uh, adhesive electrodes that are used in uh, in the surgical field okay uh so i wanna i'm gonna use it just for show you uh how to to fix it i'm gonna use the stainless steel electrode for the the, the ankle the ankle problem just imagine an ankle sprain or something like this i got a band i put a band i put uh, the electrode under the band okay what I need is just the plate, for example, and one electrode. I connect the cable that we were using just before for the fascia tools here on the feet, and we are here. We are. That's the the geometry between the calf and the foot. Uh, this is a resistive, okay, treatment. So the aim of this uh, treatment is to uh, increase the temperature uh, on the ankle joint and relax all the capsule. Uh, the capsular stiffness, for example, and just imagine after a sprain or a fracture, uh, the fractures are uh, always hesitating with a lot of stiffness, uh, or uh, when you remove a plaster, for example, very, very typical to have a very stiff joint. So we can connect this. Uh, guys, can you go on the on the screen, please? Let me just, just ask you, this uh, yeah. small uh, electrode, uh, this is something new, no? I, I don't have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something new. Uh, this is this is something that we well we we create this year. Uh, is uh, something for you know we, we created for those professional who working with really a lot of patients and they don't want to use the adhesive uh, pads and they need to uh, reuse thousands of times the electrodes. Yes, and also it's yes. a great for, this is for, the problem with the adhesive one, because they use so, sometimes and then you have to throw and use a new one. So yeah, I, I, I still don't have this, but I want it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the adhesive are, are, have other benefits, like that you can put, for example, where the surface is not so uh, flat. For example, this yes. you can, Using it here because the, the, lateral, the lateral part or the medial part of the knee is not so flat. Uh, so yeah, maybe. Yeah, this is in this case is better. Speak, yeah. Exactly. Maybe we speak about some application and you easily can understand when you can use, when it is better to use the adhesive or when it's better to use the fixed. Yeah. It's very flexible. So it also is, is, is uh, it's easy to make you know, good contact with the, with the patient. Okay. Uh, it's okay. Guys, is it possible to show the display? All right, so what we are, we already set up the treatment with the plates. Now we go on the hands-free. Inside the hands-free, we can choose the medium geometry. Later we'll speak about this. And we have the resistance, we have the frequency and the time of our, uh, of our treatment. Let's say, okay, we set up 60% uh, of power. Here we can put a lot of intensity because there is no uh, no problems. I have a measure. Uh, I can measure the temperature. The starting point is 27. Oh, sorry, 27. Okay, 27.5. Can, can you see? Yeah. Okay. 27.5 is uh, about here. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna speak about the. Uh, the hands-free modality and um, everything okay, Paddy? Yes. Okay. So uh, we leave uh, our patient, Federica, with the, with the treatment going on, and I'm speaking about uh, the geometries of this uh, uh, hands-free modality. As you can see here, 
uh, on the PowerPoint presentation, we have different, several uh, possibilities of uh, application of uh, the, for example, maybe that, yeah, that, uh, one second, please. So, <laughs> in this case, it's easy to understand uh, how we can use it on a, a cervical uh, problem. We can warm up and have the benefits on the cervical area. This is good also as a show geometry for the tendinopathies or for a head of the humor problem. This is for a, an open, um, epicondylized problem, this is for a wrist. So you can easily identify a lot of possibilities of our treatment. And the point is you can combine exercises, uh, mobilization, manipulation, uh, of the joint with the benefit of the uh, dive care energy. Okay, uh, let's have a look on the medium geometry. The, the medium geometry is between 20 and 50 uh, centimeters. This is the geometry that we set up for Federica, for example, for doing the treatment of the, on the ankle. Uh, it is quite similar to this one. This is with a uh, uh, adhesive pads, okay? Uh, on the other hand, we got a uh, epicondylite is in a different way where we have a most, length, most long geometry for, for example, involve also the flexor of the wrist. And in this case would be a uh, cervicobrachialgia. The third one is the long geometry between 50 and 120 centimeters. There are some examples also for the drainage. As you can see, we get the opening of the vessels on the head stations. This is good for uh, shatika. Uh, also a long geometry from the Cruelgia. Uh, uh, so, Federica, how do you feel? Zoom out. Come stai? Bene. Senti caldo? Due. Okay, he's gonna perceiving uh, uh, not so much heating. What was the, uh, the, the temperature before? 25. 27. No, 20, I, I forgot. 27. 27, okay. Have a look now. Okay, now we are reaching the 29.1. Okay, just a couple of degrees, but we can increase a lot. I can push the machine absolutely more. The point is that I can combine the energy with the manual therapy. Okay, so I, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm using just a push and pull techniques or pumpage techniques. I can increase the dorsiflexion, for example, of the feet. Okay, working on the inversion and the version. So just for recovering the full range of movement, benefit from all the energy that is passing through uh, the joint. The histogram on the machine tell us that we are using a, a, a yellow window. Do you remind the yellow window or before? Is around 35 and 38 degrees. So uh, we can wait uh, almost 10 minutes more and we will increase intensity on the joint for sure, increasing the vascularization. And actually, I, with, with my hand, it's totally different. One, <laughs> one ankle or uh, instead of the other, okay? So you can uh, easily perceive with your hand the difference. Uh, Diego, do you have any questions or uh, anything? Uh, no, I just want to tell when I, I used to do this, exactly this for Achilles tendon treatment. Oh, yes. uh, yeah, but I don't have this plate, so I use this, uh, this um, adhes adhesive one and make a manual treatment as you are doing in this moment. But to, yeah. get, to have a really good improve, usually I put the machine, I put a mid, medium geometry and about 85, even 90%. And in yeah. three minutes, I have, a, a, I already, as I told before, the player said, said me, yeah, I feel eight, nine, just a little bit more and start to burn, I have to put down. But I put, I put directly in this position, I put directly, 85% and start treatment. In, in one minute, I have, uh, I, I feel with hands, this as, as you told before, when you put the, the hand in the, in the ankle, you feel this, um, 
different temperature in the tendon too because in the back side for yeah. sure it's, uh, it's getting warm too yeah exactly exactly also because yeah. the tendon is a connective tissue so with high level of in yeah. impedance so uh, yeah. with the resistive we can we can focus on those treatment in on those tissues so you're right exactly yeah. and when you push in dorsiflexion you concentrated more energy in that position too so for sure you improve fast the temperature there Almost we don't need to. We don't need to wait ten minutes to improve temperature and then start our treatment. You you can uh, save a lot of time. In one minute, you have already three four degrees more. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Also, we can do some exercises. Uh, I got friends of mine that were working a lot with bands and exercise with uh, free weights exercise. So you can put the plates and also do some proprioception. Uh, exercises and, and so on. That's okay. So, uh, okay, I'll switch off the machine. <laughs> Everything's okay for you? Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, so, just other things, then I, I think we can go with the questions, with the pre questions, okay? Uh, other topics about the possibilities of the machine. We have the uh, great ability to use uh, the athermic uh, program. The Athermic is a very special program that uses high levels of intensity but without producing uh, thermal effects. So uh, I know that other machines like those ones that I was using in my, in my clinic uh, could do the Athermic just with low level of powers. Uh, this is not a good idea because you, you need a lot of time for reducing the pain, for example. Using the Athermic, uh, with this with this machine, you can have a high level of energy transfer, but without producing uh, temperature inside. So it's a very uh, useful uh, uh, for promoting the healing, uh, also on the acute phase. Okay, let's speak about the uh, vaculation. Well, vaculation for uh, I, I remember one question of the last webinar that someone did to Francesco and, and Mauro about the using of chondroitin and glucosamine. Yes, you can use the vaculation also for delivery, uh, this kind of products that we know that are, could, be, could be interesting for, uh, for joints uh, with this uh, special um, program, vaculation, or you can use also other, uh, for example, natural molecules like Arnica, like other things. Uh, so the, the, the strong point of the vaculation program is that the, the machine doesn't mo modificate, doesn't damage the molecules that you are um, um, vaculate inside the tissue. I have a question uh, yeah. from one of uh, the therapists that are using uh, our yeah. uh, tech devices. They say that usually they do like a 15 minutes and free treatment mm -hmm. and after that they proceed with the use of the uh, um, fascia tools, fascia tools. Yeah, and manipulation. Yes. So I think this is quite, uh, do you think it's quite common? Is something that you suggest? Yes, it's, a, it's an optional treatment, very good. Uh, preparing the tissues, uh, exactly as uh, Diego said before, he, he was speaking about the capacity, or you can do with the, with the hands-free treatment. Uh, so you prepare the tissue, and then you go straight where the tissue needs to be treated. Okay, so it's a very uh, simple way to use it. Yeah, that's right. Yes, uh, sometimes we don't have a lot of time to spend with the, with the patient, no? So it's useful too, I do it, to, to use the hands-free, to improve temperature, to, to have the tackle affected. And then I make some different manual treatment or I do some resistive treatment. So it's yep. possible to make uh, both together. Depends of the, how much how, how much time we have. Uh, because sometimes in my job, sometimes you have to make a, a lot of things in really short period of time. Right. You're so, right. Yeah, it's possible to put uh, to put the, the hands free in one player, for example, and make some treatment of of course being close to another player, and then. Uh, uh, remove the the, the, the the plates of hands free and make a, a different treatment so it's a uh, help in the our dynamic too this uh, this hands free it's true that it's good affected but in the dynamic it's uh, it's very useful too
There are a lot of questions about the uh, time of, treat, of treatment. treatment. Uh, for example, in my day-by-day -day job, uh, I could use um, the tagger just five minutes for prepare the tissue, and then I can do exercises. Or sometimes I use a full session, like 20 minutes of, uh, of tagger therapy. It depends on, on, the, on the pathology, uh, but in a yeah. few minutes, especially with the 7,000, you achieve great results in really, really few minutes. As you, as you saw before, uh, the increasing in temperature is, uh, you, you can increase two, three, four, five degrees in, in few, a few seconds. So uh, it's very easy to, uh, to use uh, uh, short yes. sessions. Yes, of course you need some experience, but it's easy to, to understand how machine works and then you can be very effective in, in short period of time. You don't have to make there 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes ask, ask the, to the patient, uh, you start to feel heat, you feel something, you don't feel no. In one minute, in my opinion, you have, you need the answer, you need to, to, yeah. to be in the, um, in, in the temperature that you want. You decide that in, for this tissue, this player or this patient, in this moment of the pathology, I want to put uh, not so much temperature, I want to be in five or six, for example. So I tell him, tell me when you are in five or six, I put high power, when you start to get, he, he tell me, oh, yes, yeah, six, seven, okay, I put a little bit down in 30 seconds, I'm already in five, five six. I used to treat in 20 minutes. It's very, very often that I make more than 20 minutes. Sometimes the players ask you to, to, to do it, even, even if no pathologist, just like kind of warming up because they feel the proof temperature of tissue. So they came, in this case, usually I do 10 minutes. They want to make uh, some uh, uh, hamstring uh, warming up. Of course, warming up with the machine is not a warming up active. It's not like the gym. So I put them 10 minutes to make warming up with the capacitive or resistive, depends. And then I send them to the gym before training and make another 10 minutes of warming up or 15 minutes. So yeah. it's, uh, more functional, you mean? One with the yes, device, of course. Is more functional. Of course, yeah, I cannot so put only the device and send them to the pitch to training, but uh, uh, doing the both thing, and a lot of players like this feels comfortable and come to ask to do that. So they yeah. arrive a bit before, only for this, even if no pain, no pathology, just like a warming up. Yeah, 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 you're right. Thank you, this is a good uh, experience of an expert, I can say, because um, it's, it's very easy, I can say, it's very easy to, to learn how to use the machine, and you suggest us uh, some different ways of uh, of using the device uh, by the opinion of an expert. So, for example, have a high intensity at the beginning and then reduce the power is is for speed up yes. the treatment. Uh, yes. Yes, I used to do the same. For for example, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So when you have ten minutes to do the treatment, you need to be effective from the second minute, not from the fifth or exactly. sixth minutes. Exactly. So yeah. this machine can give us this possibility in a safe way. So it's comfort, comfortable to, to, to do that. All right, so let's go on the last, uh, on the last part. Well, something about the pulse modality. Uh, the pulse modality is a um, high power uh, emission, let's say, uh, that we can use for trigger point uh, uh, treatment mainly, uh, where we need to stay on a specific area, very close area, for a uh, quite long time. So we don't want to burn anyone. So we don't using the continuous emission, like this picture here. We're not using the continuous emission where there is always an emission of a flow, but there is a sequential emission. I say a, a pulse emission uh, between an on phase and an off phase. There are three levels of uh, pulse modality. Uh, this is the, the, the softer one. Uh, so we can stay on a focused area, promoting a great amount of energy without, uh, uh, I can say, cooking the patient, okay? <laughs> without promoting so much temperature in that area. Another thing is the scanning modality, where we, can, we have a, a special program with three different frequencies for treating. The, the first layers, the begin, then we go with a medium frequency on the medium layers, and then we go with a deeper 
uh, on the deeper layers with a, a lower level of frequency. This is very good in case of drainage, for example. Uh, this is also an expert modality of using that. Uh, on the, usually these courses that we do, we, we spend one day or maybe two days to well train the people. Here is just a webinar, guys, so I hope you can just understand the, uh, the principles and the possibilities of this technology, okay? Uh, are there any warnings, uh, any cautions? Well, uh, last time Francesco and uh, Mauro already speak about, 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 speak about this. Uh, well, just take, there are no, uh, no evidence, of course, uh, nobody is, is dead by using of uh, pacemaker combined with Tecla, but we don't suggest to, to do uh, these trials, okay? So uh, the warnings are the basic warnings for every physical therapy, uh, I mean, electric physical therapy, uh, like pacemaker, pregnancy, neoplasma infection, uh, if the patient has a temperature, uh, it is not suggesting to use this device. Also, on directly on the injured skin, well, not directly on the injured skin, but try um, the treatment around the area, around the injured area could be a good idea for promoting the, the healing. Uh, hypersensitivity, like the neuropathies, uh, well, it's a good thing not to use on those patients. Uh, with the prosthesis and other devices implanted inside the, the patient, well, uh, it depends on the prosthesis. Uh, with the metal one, there is no problem because, because the metal are conductive, uh, but you have to uh, well know what kind of prosthesis they have implanted on. Uh, we can say also is user dependent. What does it mean? That the operator makes the difference, of course. Uh, the diagnostic ability to evaluate the patient is, uh, is the first thing. Our brain is the first machine that we have to switch on, okay? And then, of course, the, this kind of devices can speed up, can amplify our ability of treatment. Okay, guys, so uh, I, think, uh, I think it's almost everything. Just the last, uh, the last slide, just to remind uh, what we did today. Uh, we uh, we see uh, um, how this uh, this tool could be really extraordinary for all rehabilitation professionals. Uh, as saw on the list, there are some doctors, some chiropractors, some osteopaths, a lot of physios. I'm very glad about this because uh, for uh, every one of these professionals can be very useful. We can integrate with our own techniques and. For sure, it's operator friendly because we save our hands, okay? And uh, it's patient friendly because everyone likes uh, warm sensation, massage, so everyone really loves these machines uh, since the first treatment. And for the, one, this is one of the reasons of the success of this machine because it's, uh, it increased the retention of the patient, okay? We can achieve results and, well, uh, make our patient more happy about the results. All right, guys, for me is, oh, sorry. Uh, for me is everything, Mauro and Francesco. Or... Yes, I think uh, we should, uh, we have some questions. Yes, yes, it's, yes. it's like uh, 25 minutes to 12. Perfect. So we are uh, another 25 minutes at disposal. I think we can answer. We are on time. Yeah, yeah we, are, we are perfectly in time. I think we have a few questions, maybe you can answer. Yeah. Okay, is about, uh, let's start maybe uh, with the last ones. Uh, one was about uh, the tendon, um, Achilles tendon treatment. Yes. Uh, let me find it for you. Uh, is it normal to feel discomfort while using uh, the resistive mode on the Achilles tendon and its surrounding? Some of my patients do complain of that. No, it's not normal. We, we never have to uh, induce this kind of sensation on our patient. The sensation always has to say to be very, uh, very pleasant, very gentle. So maybe uh, there was not the right, the proper setup of the machine. Uh, let's see an example of how to treat the, uh, the Achilles tendon. Uh, for example, well, a good geometry could be this one, for example, using the plate under the cow, use a resistive, okay, resistive handpiece, 50 millimeters, okay? We can just stay in here and wait for a while. We can wait for a while here and after 
couple of minutes, three minutes, five minutes, depending also on the hydration of the patient, we can start to warm up this, uh, this tendon back here. Okay, the remind the patient that the patient has to be clean, uh, shaved also, uh, sometimes they put some oil, some cream. This is a not, uh, this is a uh, an horrible conductor. So if the clean has to be absolutely washed, and we have to put a bit of cream in here. Also, we can ask the patient to drink a, a couple of glasses of water during, I, I mean, uh, before the treatment, for induce a good conductivity, a good hydration of the part. This is very important. Some people, especially the elder lady, uh, are. Uh, uh, have a dry skin, uh, very poor in water, so uh, could be a problem this. But with this geometry, you will for sure identify uh, your target tissue in a very pleasant way. Next question is, when doing muscle release with fascia tools, is it from origin insertion or to insertion to origin? Yeah, nice question. Yeah. Uh, we will speak about this on the on the next seminars, and we will divide if we are speaking about myofascial syndromes, if we are speaking about acute problems. So uh, about um, regarding uh, a general uh, is a lesion. He's speaking about a lesion or a muscle. What kind of muscle mm. muscle problem? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There is no there is no rule. You can do in a, in the easiest way for you. Uh, well, there is uh, some courses around the uh, the fascia, the fascia treatment. So uh, maybe it's a good thing to uh, to do some some studies about the fascia treatment. But it's very easy to use, and we don't need a specific direction for treat the, the densification. When we find a densification, for example, like I did before in the uh, in the, in the um, junction, a mio, mio tendinous junction, I can just work on the densification, respecting the patient, of course, warming up the tissue, but I can do from distal to proximal, or I can do from proximal to distal, doesn't matter, because I'm working on a hard tissue. Basically, I'm working better in this way, because the direction of the fascia is more stiff, so I can grab it better, and I can solve it better. Okay, next one is, um, can TECA be used if the patient is undergoing orthopedic surgery, such as endoprostitis or nail or canvas placement? Yeah, so uh, I, was, I was speaking just before about this. So uh, yes, we use it absolutely after the surgery. Uh, I suggest to use more the capacitive method because the capacitive method is, uh, uh, is, not, is, not, is not going so deep, so we are not affecting the prosthesis area. We're going to respect it, respect and, uh, it. And, uh, but we can work on the surrounding tissues that are very important for uh, providing the oxygenation and all the, uh, the supply for the affected area, let's say. So work with capacitive uh, is very safe, uh, show geometry if it's possible for help the uh, the surgery the surgery area. Okay, the next question is in the new hand free electrodes. Yep. Uh, can you use the cream? Yes. Uh, maybe you haven't seen before, but uh, I put a very little um, a little bit of cream and and I, I put a bit of cream also on on the leg of Federica for uh, uh, inducing a good conductivity. All right, so clean the skin and hydrate and also put a bit of cream. It's important to say conductive cream, not a massage cream, because a lot of uh, physios, a lot of people use the normal cream uh, ah, and, then, and then can have some problems and then can feel some uh, strange feelings or I don't know, or some pain or, but it's really important yeah. conductive cream. Yeah, of course, uh, we are speaking about the stainless steel uh, electrodes, so the cream has to be put in here, not on the adhesive, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, we lose the adhesive power. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, here we got a gel, so we don't need uh, the, adhesive, the, the cream. Uh, question regarding implants. Uh, if we have a patient with metal implants, yeah. can we use it uh, to treat different zones? 
yes, like like I said before, like I said before, yes, you can you can treat the area of the implant in a capacitive mode or the total other area is uh, is very free. It's very safe. It's safe, exactly. Uh, just take in account the geometry. For example, if you got an implant here on a knee, and um, well, and you want to treat the back, of course, you just have to put the plate in other places because you are not affecting the knee. If you have also the the prosthesis here on the knee. You can easily treat the the two because you are your geometry is just from here to here, so you are not affecting the joint, okay, and the implant. Contact device be used for varicose veins, veins in insufficiency. Yes, for sure. Uh, I suggest uh, well the the atheromic modality for improving the uh, we can say. Um, the potential of a cellular membrane to uh, to restore the ability to reduce the inflammation on, on inside the veins and also for uh, recover the tone of the vein, the vascular system. So, a thermal mainly, and both resistive or capacitive, depending if you are treating superficial layers or the deepest uh, tissues. Uh, well, something regarding the hands-free mode. Yeah. Is there any risk to burn uh, of burning uh, the patients? Well, uh, the hands-free modality is a modality where the, the operator has to stay quite close to the patient because maybe, for example, you can put in one leg and treat in the other. Uh, you, you don't leave the patient alone, okay? But there is, there is no risk. Uh, there is no risk in terms of uh, burning. But uh, I suggest to work with the patient, with your manual techniques, with exercises, always have the perception of what your patient is, is going gonna, is gonna to do. Uh, perceiving the temperature, put your hand on, on the part that you are treating on, measure with a thermometer. So uh, always be in contact with your patient. With a patient that has yeah. a twisted ankle. Uh, sorry, sorry, Diego. Please go ahead. Yeah, no, my, my opinion. Uh, tech art treatment. We have to be always uh, close to the patient. Uh, it's really important to in, 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 uh, share all the time information. We have to this in, interactive therapy. We have to yeah. ask him all the time about the scale, how he feels, how much burn, not burn, some current or whatever. Especially when we make hands free. So. We cannot put electrodes, in my experience, and go out, go to do something to change the room. I mean, we put, explain, should not burn, and then, uh, and then uh, we keep close. We don't change the room. We cannot just put, for a clinical dynamic, we cannot put, in my opinion, uh, and change the room. We can do after a few minutes that we find the, 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 the right intensity, not burning, call if you feel something strange, call if you start to burning, uh, and then we can go out. But I prefer to be close, even if we make, when we make hands free. Right, right. Other questions? Okay, if you have a patient with a twisted ankle, yeah. how long after are you, avail are you able to treat the twisted ankle? Well, since, since the first day, there is not a... Mm, there is not uh, any risk in, in this, also in the acute phase, depending on what you are doing. Uh, I want to ask to, uh, to Diego how he managed a twisted angles, an ankle sprain, uh, because he needs to speed up uh, the recovery. Yeah, no. first hour. So I'm very curious to, to ask to you what are you doing with your, uh, because it's different my kind of clients, my kind of patient that maybe can wait some days with no problem. and. I'm very curious to know what you are doing with this kind of patients. Look, uh, we we study uh, from university, from all course, from all life that we cannot improve temperature in the acute phase, and this is correct. But I'm not afraid to, for a short period of time, improve temperature in that tissue. Uh, not all case, of course. If it's really swollen, I don't will will not improve temperature, but uh, I do in the first or second day. I start to 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 do treatment that will improve temperature. 
And if I have some reaction, I can control this with ice, for example. But uh, I start very soon and I have a really good results. I don't wait three, four days to start to improve the temperature because we are speaking about uh, uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes treatment and then we have uh, different possibilities after. So I think this uh, stimulated dead tissues, even in acute phase, in, in experience, in my experience, in practical, even if books say the opposite, probably, I have good results. Yeah, I don't yeah. put in the, just after the injury. Of course, I put ice, elevation, uh, like everybody. This is good, this is normal protocol. But, but I start to think about improved temperature even in, in the same day of the injury. And I don't never have something strange or big reaction. And even if it happened, I put in the ice bath and uh, the problem is solved. So and I restart the, restart the next day. In, this is for ankle, but this is for different pathologies too. Even in, 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 in most muscular problem, muscular injury, I don't wait too much to start to make tacar. I have possibility to make a thermic too. Maybe in the same day I use a thermic, but uh, the day one is it means the day after the injury. We we, we consider the day one. I start yep. to put uh, improved temperature, not so much, but one, two degrees, I do it and I have uh, good results. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you, you remind me a lot of things uh, that I want to specify, specify that uh, the increasing in temperature has to be uh, moderate. Uh, I remind 10 years ago when the first devices uh, uh, started to become quite popular, and people with no rules starting to do tacker to everyone also on uh, on lesion on muscular lesion and the point is when you increase too much temperature in a fresh lesion when you got a bleeding inside the tissues you can uh, literally cook the lesion okay so you can have a, a kind of fibrosis before the time so uh, what you said is uh, i agree with you totally totally agree uh, we need to be confident with with uh, with what we are doing. I remember also uh, a friend of mine that is is connected right now in, in webinar. That is Paco from Spain. He's the specialist of Spain. He's a professor also, and uh, he he was doing the the same during a seminar in South America. Uh, he told me uh, that there, there was an ankle sprain at the at the seminar and. Uh, in, in a contrary way uh, of the common use that where we, we don't put uh, some, some warming, he, he treated the patient that was a student with some temperature and the day after of the seminar, the, the swollen was completely solved. So uh, yeah. there is a lot that we can do with this, uh, this kind of, uh, of technology. Thank you for your experience. Yeah, because of it's, course it's we, have, we, have to, we have to understand the situation, we have to understand the, the damage uh, of course, if I have a big damage in muscle hematoma, I will not improve too much temperature in the first second day. But 90% uh, of the cases, because in my opinion, we don't have to stop the inflammation process. We need the inflammatory process. You don't have right. to give to give anti-inflammatories and only ice elevation. You have to give some stimulation for the right healing, and then we have a good tissue. And when you put his player to run after one week, for example, he will be able to run because his tissue is good, is elastic, because the, the, we respected the, 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 the natural process of uh, healing, cicatrization. You don't have to stop this process. We have to respect if it's too much uh, the reaction from body, if it's too much swollen, okay, elevation, compression, ice. But at the same time, you have to keep in mind that uh, the inflammatory process is uh, helping us to do faster and in a better way. The, the healing and the, the, the create you know, new, new tissue and the, the quality of the scar will be very good, will be much better than if you make only compression, ice and give pills to stop this process. So we should not do it. We That's should right. respect, the, the, understand the, the, the feelings, understand the pain, how much swollen is it, and then uh, start to our treatment without afraid to put some warming or, or, or not. It's not true, in my opinion, experience that you have only cold treatment from the first three, four days. We lose time. 
if you have time, it's not a problem. But if you want to, to be more effectiveness and show the progress and have good, good uh, results, uh, I'm really not afraid to, to, to do it faster. All right. Is there uh, a limit of time a week uh, to apply tech therapy in the same area? Well, um, I used to do uh, three times a week, but there is no limit because you can do even in the, in the morning and on the afternoon. Depends what are the processes, biological processes that you, are, uh, that you want to stimulate and the time that you need for recovery. For sure, Diego, that has the time is money in football club for sure, <laughs> and uh, they need to speed up uh, and using all the abilities. Two three and... times per day is not a problem. <laughs> oh, two three times per day <laughs> is two, not. Two three times per day, twenty minutes, twenty minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah. For example, so, injury so... players in the morning we make a tackle and put him in the pool. Or afternoon, we put him make tackar, some treatment, manual. We put him to make uh, some upper body in the gym, or if he has some uh, legs injury, and we can repeat tackar after treatment. Of course, if after working six, seven hours in one day, uh, injury players, if he's tired, it's swollen, and painful, we don't make tackar again for the third time. I put in the 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 ice pad. But no, no limits in this case. I use it very often, minimal two times when it's possible, when it's not possible one time. Uh, in, in case of treatment, and depends on the phase, because if I'm in the first days, I use tackle, it's true, but I don't use three times per day in the second day of, uh, of injury. But uh, after one week from first or second degree muscle injury, I start to put it three or maybe three times, depends. Depends of the case, depending how 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 players feel, because this this interaction is important too. Uh, mostly, if he's really comfortable with the attacker, so we can repeat, we can use uh, more times, even in only one day. I'm very I'm very glad to see uh, a lot of friends of mine here in uh, in the list from all all parts of uh, of, of the world. I, I say Carlos that we. Had the fortune to have with us with the with the webinar with the previous seminar, the previous webinar uh, to Portugal and Brazil. Uh, I saw also Maria from Greece and a lot of other friends for all over the world, also from Asia, from Malaysia. Uh, there is uh, well people from all over the world actually, so I'm very glad to this opportunity. Uh, I hope the webinar is uh, is quite could be clear and easier and. We are here just for share our our day by day job, our experience with this device that make us very passionate because uh, we can achieve really great results. So we love our job. We put a lot of energy on that. So I hope could be a good thing for you guys. Uh, any other questions? Maybe we can answer the last couple of questions, then we we we, we finish. Okay. How many uh, how many post operative days can we start using Tech? All right, according to the surgeon, all right, first of all, uh, your surgeon, your doctor has to know something about Tecker. Uh, I work with a lot of surgeons that understand the uh, potential, potentiality of, of the machine. So uh, according to, to, to the surgery that he did, that depends on the bleeding that he had inside of the surgery, he can prescribe and say, okay, from the seven days, uh, after or after three weeks, you can start also with Tekka, or sometimes you can do uh, just the, the day before. So depending on the of the surgery, depending on the technique, and depending on on how the uh, the operation goes. Uh, the, the point is how many uh, bleeding had the patient. Okay, uh, but in the surrounding area, you can do when you want because you are just removing the healing around the area. You don't need to go straight. Absolutely. Never, never this is the right uh, option. What, what do you think, Diego, about this? Yeah, yeah, it's a good answer. I think the same. I think okay. the same. We have always to respect the surgeon uh, indications. Uh, explain then uh, what is this, because uh, you, very often they doesn't know the, the physios machines. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I do the same, the same as you told before. I think it's a, 
is a, is a, is a good way. Okay. Okay, the last question is, if we have a chronic sinusitis, how does it work in terms of frequency and duration? What, is, what do you suggest? Wow, nice. Well, uh, should we hear uh, Chris, Chris, uh, Chris, Christian Valois that was here on the previous seminar, that he has more data, is more expertise. She's online. Oh, so, she's, online. Ah, she's online, great, great. Well, it's very early in Brazil right now. So yeah. it's, it's early she morning. Five o'clock. Ciao, Chris. Well, I'm very glad to. I, I don't see you here, but I hope you're there. So you will be the right person for answer to this question. Uh, I have no experience because I'm more on the sport and musculoskeletal area. Uh, I know that there is encouraging results also in this area, uh, resp respiratory, uh, bronchitis, asthma, and uh, sinusitis problems. But actually, I, I cannot answer to you. Maybe we can ask by mail or we can send the, the question to Chris. Yes, thanks. She say ciao. Ah, ciao. <laughs> ah, now see you. Ciao, Chris. <laughs> Okay then. Okay guys, so. Well, I think uh, for all the other questions we can answer, for all the other questions we're gonna answer by mail as uh, uh, Enrico said. Uh, I think now we is almost 12, so on time. it's yeah. perfect in time. So I think uh, I would like to say thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very you. much Enrico. Yeah. Diego. And also, of course, Diego. Super Diego. Thank, Thank you very much, Diego, for your support. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yes. Okay, now at the end of this uh, session, uh, automatically uh, you will receive five questions. Quite easy. It's like uh, just to understand uh, if uh, what we explained today are being uh, received uh, by, uh, by you. So it's just like a couple of minutes maximum. Uh, to answer these five questions and uh, automatically your answers will be saved. So please just spend two minutes after this to answer the questions. Yeah, uh, I would like to remind you next Tuesday, next week, to, on Tuesday, same time, same channel. Don't miss it because it's going to be very, very, very interesting. We will if, uh, find the complete program on, on uh, our social network or the one that you already received. So just following and uh, don't remember, don't, don't remind, I will let you remind it. And don't forget to uh, go to our web uh, page www.megatobus.com and find out all the uh, online courses with videos and things that can explain even better and more deeper what we explained today. But next week, we're going to do more deep on Sasha, it's going to be very interesting for all of you. So we wait all of you, even more, <laughs> talk with your friends, this is very interesting, and uh, they will have very good information from us. Okay, Diego, is there anything that you want to say? Well, I just uh, want to make congratulations for you, for your organization. I saw a lot of people participating, so it's uh, Fantastic. I saw too a lot of uh, uh, Brazilian people. It means that they, they, they woke up really early. So I say hello to everybody, to all of them. And uh, just want to, to say thank you, you, to, to, to invite me to participate of this, uh, this uh, seminar. Okay, just last thing, if you register, of course, you are uh, attending this uh, webinar, you are already registered also for the next webinar, you will receive a reminder one day in advance and one hour in advance. Of course, to all our uh, partners, worldwide distributors, feel free to share uh, the invitation to new potential clients and to uh, probably do also this on, um, on social media and uh, in order to have an even bigger crowd next week. So I think uh, we can conclude this. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much also to Federica, yeah, our model. Thank you. thank you. And uh, thank you very much, guys. See you next week. All right, guys. See, see you. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Ciao, Diego. Ciao, Diego. Ciao, ciao. Grazie, ciao. ciao.